process of recovery from the Gulf oil spill draws upon an intricate jigsaw puzzle of organizations, from commercial and governmental to national and local nonprofits. One integral participant is the National Audubon Society. Their response center in Moss Point, Mississippi is staffed by both employees and volunteers doing what they can to protect the diverse avian wildlife. I talked with two of their staff to find out what they're doing to help. Well, in response to the oil spill, Audubon launched, launched a volunteer effort, um, and over 30,000 people since then have registered to volunteer with Audubon, um, and that's from around the country. Um, my job is to engage the folks in Mississippi on the ground um, in meaningful volunteer projects, um, and right now our focus is the Coastal Bird Survey, um, getting it up and running and um, sustainable. Um, and what the Coastal Bird Survey is, is a citizen science driven um, volunteer effort where volunteers go out um, and they monitor a one mile segment of beach. They kind of adopt that segment of beach and it's their segment. Um, and they go out usually about every two weeks and monitor the beach, um, record all the birds that they see. Um, if any are oiled, um, they call in the ones that are you know, heavily oiled and need to be captured. Um, and they have all the resources to do that. Um, but really what we're trying to get is a base, some baseline data um, so that in the long term we could mitigate these um, bird populations and really track um, what this oil spill has done to them and what further actions need to be taken um, in order to restore their populations to their full glory. The people here that are working at the, at the center, the staff has done just a phenomenal job. It's a Herculean proportions of coordinating both the citizen science aspect of it with our coastal bird survey as well as what I think is really making a big difference to a lot of people is our personal contact and the, the human element, if you will, of trying to call back every single person that has reached out to Audubon to be a part of this um, effort to, to make a difference in what's going on with the Gulf oil crisis. And so I think we're 100 days in right now. Um, and I know that we've been up and running for um, a large portion of that, the majority of that time. So the first time that um, I actually saw oil on the beaches, um, I was with one of my survey teams um, in Gulfport, Mississippi, um, right at the entrance um, to Gulfport on the Biloxi border at DeBees Road. Um, and we took our survey, survey teams down there. We always make sure to you know, check to see if the beaches are closed. Um, the beaches weren't closed. Um, and so we went out on our survey team and as soon as we got to the water line, we started noticing tar balls. Um, and we kept walking and the tar balls got thicker and thicker. Um, and with that, um, I think for most people that I was with on that survey, it was their first time seeing the oil. Um, so it was very, interesting dynamic because for me it's my home um, so it's really hard to see that oil and remain focused on um, the job that we're doing of capturing um, all of the um, capturing the data on the birds um, so it's really difficult to kind of balance what we we're doing um, with the emotional aspect of it um, because everyone was infuriated that no one was there cleaning up the tar balls um, and everyone had an opinion um, on what should be done um, and it was just a really difficult situation um, to be in for all of us to see oil on our beaches for the first time um, nobody wants to see that and I think we're all emotionally distraught by the situation um, and not to mention that we saw three oiled gulls and one that was pretty significantly oiled um, and we called and reported those but unfortunately um, these birds were still flying and if the birds are still flying it's it's almost impossible to catch them um, so just being frustrated with the response um, to clean up the tar balls being frustrated with the fact that these birds aren't capturable although they do have oil on them um, and just in general um, trying to do my job well and be kind of um, the voice of reason for these folks when there was no reason in my own mind um, really was a difficult, the hardest experience I've had to um, deal with so far.